2020 Florida Prize has been postponed one year due to the coronavirus pandemic. We're conducting virtual studio visits with each of the artists. My name is Hanson Mulford. I'm the curator at the Orlando Museum of Art. And I'm Coralie Clayson Gleason, Associate Curator at the Orlando Museum of Art. And today we're visiting with Marielle Plaisir. So Marielle, you're in your studio in Miami right now? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And um, how have you been coping with the pandemic? Have you been working all this time? Uh, th this pandemic is, is just a crazy period for all of us, and it's very hard for the artists, I mean. The pandemic allowed me to stop for a moment and uh, catch my breath and uh, to know how I can continue my problematic to denounce any kind of domination as an activist artist. It was a very hard period, but with a good part, I discovered new artists, I read a lot, different books, articles, and um, I watched a lot of documentaries, a lot of exhibitions online, and I worked a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. <laughs> I have been very productive. After that, uh, the murder of, of, of George, George Floyd uh, deeply revolted me, and it was another point in, uh, in a new point in my work, and uh, for me, a second pandemic. Mm -hmm. And my question about that was to know how we can cure the big sick bodies of our governance. And um, I thought a lot about that and I realized a new theory in Link, especially um, with uh, the murder of George Floyd, but about the black body. Mm -hmm. What is a black body today? Mm -hmm. And it's, I started a new work and I am continuing it and I am in a deep reflection about that. Yes. So Maya, do you want to tell us a little bit about your practice? I believe you were trained as a painter, but your work goes across many disciplines. So you're truly a multidisciplinary artist, even using performance as part of your practice. Do you want to tell us a little bit about that? I am trying to find the perfect medium I can, I can tell to, to express what I have in my mind. So it can be drawing, painting, uh, videos, performances. I know that I have to take, for example, this medium to express that. And for the performance, for example, I, I think I, I am not a performer but it was essential in the point of my work to put my body in the scene and uh, to express what is domination with my body. So I am trying to now, for example, I am exploring a new medium, which is the backlight, and uh, I would like to explore the light in my work. I remember you describing the duality in your work between violence and the, the more activist artist that you are and also always wanted to go back to beauty and, and the fact that you're using light is really interesting as well. Would you mind talking a little bit about that? Uh, yes, beauty is very important. I think that we are living in an amazing world, but we are killing the world. I grew up in France my father always talked about um, French history with kings, uh, with the 14, Napoleon I, Vercingetorix, etc. But in the same way, he always talked about Caribbean fairy tales. And I grew up with those two components. Mm -hmm. uh, the strong part, war, violence, domination, and the other part with a sort of uh, beautiful world composed with uh, uh, boats, uh, sea, nature, flowers. I am taking those two components to explain in one part domination and in the other part the beauty of the world. And um, that's why I think that 
I am not afraid to use this, uh, this terminology in my work. It's, it's beauty, it's not decoration, it's not decorative, it's, it's beauty. When I am working with inks, with embroideries, with markers, doing embroidery lines, it's just to highlight what finally we are and uh, how the world could be amazing and beautiful. The black color is very important in my work. Uh, black for me is not black. Black for me is luminescence. Black is beauty. Chemically, black is not a color, but black is, um, is composed with all the colors in the nature. That means you can imagine how many colors in the black color, a lot of color. I am using this non-color as a color, as a powerful color. When I came in, in Guadeloupe, uh, yes, which is an overseas department of France, uh, it's not a dependent island like Haiti, for example. We are part of France till now. Mm -hmm. uh, when I came in, in, in Guadeloupe, I was 17 and all my family from my father part is from Guadeloupe. It was very hard. I was very disappointed because it was very new, very different. People talk Creole, French, but Creole too. And the culture was very different. And uh, I took a long time to be part of this country. After my studies, when I came back to Guadeloupe, I feel very comfortable because I was able to make the parallel between uh, France, Bordeaux, Paris, where I studied, and Guadeloupe. I started to learn about my past, my identity, who I am finally, because I didn't take importance of the, the color of, of my skin. For me, I, I wasn't white, I wasn't uh, black, I was just a, a, a person and that's it. But learning about uh, the past of uh, Guadeloupe, I understand that we, we was in a very uncomfortable situation and we were still under domination. Mm -hmm. And my current practice, uh, started at this time. You mentioned um, the death of George Floyd. Everyone is reassessing the past, looking at history uh, very closely and kind of trying to uh, cover the angles that weren't um, looked at before. You know, we look at the history of America right now and with much scrutiny. And, but that colonial past is way bigger than America, right? It's way bigger than an American problem. It is a, a European problem. It is, yeah. a, you know, an Australian problem. It is a, a, yes. that kind of, a, of course. right now there's been a catalyst that now this is finally coming into something that's meaningful. And I always think about the title of your work, Acta Non Verba, which means less words and more action, which is, so timely again, that's exactly what is happening right now. People want action, not words, right? Yeah. My work is an open window to the world. I am talking about my identity and how we feel today. But I think that uh, a lot of countries uh, lived under domination until now. And um, we, we have to denounce we have to take care of that. We have to be attentive and uh, we, we, we have to change things. Mm -hmm. it, it's very important for me to denounce, to, to, be, to be active, to do something, to do my part. I don't have anything else. Mm -hmm. My voice, it's my heart, it's my performance, it's my body. Uh, okay, this one... It's the second one of, uh, of the series of Backlight. So I took this point to explain how black people, uh, the skin of the black skin could be a malediction. And when you are black, you are a bad guy. In this Backlight, Josephine Baker is a metaphor of, uh, of the malediction of sham, but around her and the other character, which is a 
certainly uh, someone from the, the bourgeoisie. She's mocking the bourgeoisie. It's a sort of story I am telling through uh, this backlight, but I think that each people can write his own story. Uh, from the same series, um, Miles Davis, as well as um, Josephine Baker, they were both activists uh, fighting against domination for black people. And it's the same story, the same uh, narrative uh, through all the, the, the backlight series. These are uh, actually backlit works yes. on a transparent uh, photographic film. Yes. Uh, it's a collage in the black background. Uh, I took some archival um, uh, pictures from the Caribbean. Yes. Uh, for example, for the one of Josephine Baker is uh, St. Kitts and Nevis. Oh, and yeah. the one of uh, Miles Davis is uh, Guadeloupe. The second character from the bourgeoisie is always from a painting, an existing painting uh, from the 17th, 18th century. There is different shots from uh, my own photography, the, the flowers, for example. Uh, Maya Angelou, which, is, uh, which, uh, which was also a, an activist, singer, uh, performer, and uh, it was just to show uh, the black background and um, how I am composing the picture with the background, but like something very present and something very strong. When I am composing the background, it's layers, layers after layers. It took a lot of time. It's not just the black uh, color from the tube. It's a black very composed with different uh, layers and mediums like resin, inks, uh, acrylics, and, and uh, sometimes uh, oil. And uh, the character here is in, always in the middle of the, of the canva and uh, white, like uh, something very bright. The fact that you said that they appear as something very bright, it reminds me also of a starry sky and they can be that, you know, they are part of that constellation. You know, it's the Maya Angelou constellation. Oh, yes, yes, part of the universe. Yeah, there is a sense uh, in, the, in the work of, of a certain sense of magic. I don't know if that relates to the Caribbean fables that you were talking about earlier, but there's a sense of uh, otherworldliness, yeah. I guess. Yeah, a sort of, uh, yeah, a sort of magical world. I am always trying to find the good part in each people. I am very positive and uh, all my work is part of my hope. I think that the world could be better and we, we can do better and, and uh, my neighbor could be better. I'm, I can be better. I can be a better person. And, but but uh, we have to work on that. We need hope, of course, but... Uh, I think seriously, it's possible. <laughs> seriously, I think it's possible. I think that uh, fabrics means uh, social condition, who you are, who we are. And I am using the fabric, strong fabric, to realize the frame of, uh, of the work, of the piece of art. And um, it's a way to underline the social condition of different populations. People are judging people uh, regarding their clothes. When you are in the blue of work, that means that you are a worker. When you are uh, wearing uh, white clothes, that means that maybe you could be someone important. I am fighting against that because that means that we are categorize people through what they are wearing. That means that through their, uh, the color of their skin. And there is no difference between the person who is wearing uh, clothes for work and uh, white clothes. And, and there is no difference. The difference is inside the body, mm -hmm. not in the appearance, not superficially. And it, again, we have to take care of that because it's very important we we can we can meet amazing people but don't talk with them because 
uh, the appearance is just bad. Uh, here is a, a pair of gloves uh, worn by a, um, a worker, and I am transforming this object in something not only beautiful but precious. Mm -hmm. That means that this pair of gloves is very strong because there is all the families, the past of this worker, what he's doing every day, days after days, going in the street, working, it's hard, under the sun, etc., etc. It's his life and it's a life who is part of our world. That means it's, it's very important. At the beginning, the, the pair of gloves, it's, it's a leather uh, pair of gloves, very scratched mm -hmm. and uh, brown. And uh, I don't know how many years he's uh, wearing this pair of gloves, but this worker gave me uh, this pair of gloves and uh, as something, as a metaphor of domination. And I keep it, I examine the object and I turn it of gloves of, of King because he, he was amazing and uh, just doing the stuff every day and that's seeing no question and just because he has to do that for his family and uh, it's, it's a small part, small, small part of, uh, of the entire world. I just wanted to, to put in the first place people who who suffered about, domin about domination. My father is a black, black man, but uh, he came from a, from a bourgeois family. And when he was in Guadeloupe in a elementary uh, high school, he always suffered about uh, the color of his skin because his instructor wasn't great with him because of that. And um, we talked about that just maybe 10 years ago. He never talked about slavery. He never talked about domination. He talked about history of France with kings, mm -hmm. about fairy tales. And uh, that means that it, it's a taboo sujet. People can talk about slavery, about domination. The death of, of uh, George Floyd, uh, is very relevant, and I think that uh, the world will change. Do you think that that uh, event has had any uh, repercussions or impact on people in the Caribbean? Yes, yeah, yes. Uh, I know that in Martinique, Guadeloupe, and Guyane, um, um, different groups of people um, manifested for jo George Floyd. Um, this in uh, Guadeloupe, Martinique, which are overseas department of France, we are uh, under domination. We are still fighting against uh, domination every day in different way, but we are fighting. Uh, can I ask what, what brought you to Miami? I think that. Um, Miami for me is not U.S., it's Caribbean. Um, U.S., it's a new world for me. I think that I had the choice to stay in Guadeloupe, go back to France, and I think that go back to France wasn't an option. I did amazing uh, show in Museum of Quai Museum of Aquitaine, etc., and I did amazing uh, biennials in Europe, but I have been always categorized as a black person, as a black artist, as a Caribbean artist. Mm -hmm. And I think that I, I am European, I am French, I am Caribbean, but I am first in the world. And I think that uh, being a US citizen uh, give me the opportunity to be part of the world. I think that Oma selected me not because I am a Caribbean artist, even if my problematic is focused on, on, on a different subject in link with the Caribbean, but it's, I am opening in the world. And I think that if Oma selected me, it's because my narrative, it's an opening window to the world, not because I am Caribbean, not by, because I am black people. It's very important. That means I can, I can be presenting in any space in, in US.
it's just amazing Ser seriously i can i don't have another world but it's it's amazing i am free to compose to create to write to to imagine as a free artist person i think that's what people should remember right now you know the very often we, we forget what America is about, right? And it's that freedom that you just uh, mentioned, the freedom to be uh, yeah. with all your heritage, where, wherever you're from, but to be a citizen of the world, really. That's, I thought you expressed it beautifully. Thank you. I am working on different projects, um, uh, public art projects, and it's the same thing that my, my narrative in my current practice I am creating without any question in my mind, just create, that's it. It's a huge part for an artist. That's wonderful. Thank you so much, Maria. <laughs> Thank you, Coralie. Thank you, Ansen. Thank you so much.